stemmed points is going to be your expanding stem point. Okay. What that essentially means is that on the base, okay, the base itself okay, is narrower than the ears. These being the ears. Okay. And again, we'll get into that with nomenclature. Your shoulders can slope away just like this. They can be at a right angle, okay? They can also be barbed, although I have not seen too many point styles like that. Okay? The bottom of the base can be straight. They can also have a concavity to it. Perfect examples of an expanding stem base would be a perky omen. A Susquehanna broad point. Broad point. Which are very large. Most of them were used as knives. And the Orient fishtail. Which when you find that in a field, you will know that you found an orient fishtail because that's what this point is. The shoulders are usually ones off of the other. Big base looks just like a fish, hence the name. Okay, I'm going to clean this off. We're going to go into all these different terms that I threw at you. We're going to throw in the base, we're going to throw in shoulders the point, the ears, medial ridge. I'll explain all that to you, and then I'll tell you why we did this. All right, guys. The last part of this tonight is gonna to be the nomenclature of points. I've touched on a little bit of it. Now I'm actually gonna put it out there for you. All these parts for your nomenclature are not gonna be present on every point that you find or you come in contact with. Just because of the fact that there is different types, we've gone over the typology. So let's start off with A, okay? We know is the tip or the point, all right? It's always going to be the top. So here's your tip. Working our way down, we have the base, which will be your edge. Okay, C is right here, which is actually the blade or the face of the projectile point itself. This line, which I did not mark, but I did put it there, is also known as the medial ridge. And that will come into play when you're shaping your point. Um, we'll go into that in... As soon as I get done with this, I'll, I'll explain that. Okay, D, all right, is going to be our stem. Okay, E, which I don't happen to agree with, that's what the archaeologists wanted to call them. This part right here itself, between here and here, is known as a tang. All right, now, I don't agree with it, it's the way I learned it. Okay, F is we have our base. G, right here, is our notch. Okay. H is going to be our barb. Okay. I is going to be our shoulder. Okay. That would be the nomenclature for your projectile points. 
Again, you can apply it to every type point that's out there. They're not all going to have the same amount of parts. Now just quickly, when I talk about this medial ridge that's right here, when you start to get into shaping your arrowheads, and this goes for if you're doing a preform or if you're doing a finished point, okay, most, and I do say most, there's a few differences, all your points, all your projectile points are lenticular. Okay? They are all lenticular. And what I mean by that is, if we're looking at this point from the side, I'll draw this greatly exaggerated for you. That's what they look like. Now if we were looking at it from side to side, let's say from here and here, we'll say this is A and this is B. All right. Let's just say that this is the tip and this is the base. Okay. This is the center line, which is going to come into play. It's going to be very important. Okay, when you go to notch something, the thinner it is at the base, the easier your notches are going to be. If you've got a big old point that looks like this, this big old clunky point, you go to notch that, you're going to get a couple. Of, you're going to get a couple of flakes that come out of there, and you're going to get a notch. It's not going to be a deep notch, and it's going to stall out. It's what's known as stalling. You're not going to be able to nap it anymore. You're not going to be able to knock your edge out. Okay. Now, also, this being said, that if now, say we are looking directly at the base this way, if we were looking at the, the point, right, and this is the base, that right there is a medial ridge, okay, on both sides. Okay. This comes into play, especially if you're doing Clovis technology. Because that flute that you see, that comes out of the point, comes right out of there. Okay? And if you don't have this ridge, if you don't have a medial ridge in there, almost an exaggerated ridge, you won't flute it. Okay? That went a little bit further than I wanted to. The reason why I had you go through this tonight instead of getting right into um, working on points right away, is I want you to study this, and I want you to think about a point that you want to recreate. Okay? Take a couple of shots at it as we go along. And save the ones that you get. Uh, if you're going for Clovis, I would strongly disagree with you. Um, you're not going to do it. You're not going to do it your first time out. And you're going to get frustrated. So pick something easy, pick a nice point um, that you can work with and you can learn it and learn it and learn it. You're going to go back to those points and you're going to look at what you did when you first started and then later on as you progress and you're going to see a world of difference and then you're going to be able to go back to that point and you're going to be able to clean it up and make it look good. I want you to work for something, I want you to know why you took up flint napping. So that's why I want you to pick your favorite point. I always want you to take a picture of it and put it next to your napping tools, your bucket, because that's what you're going to strive for. So get to know your points, pick your point, and that's what you're going to be working for. So in the next one, we're going to start. I'll go over tools, I'll go over safety, and uh, we'll just progress as much as we can. Again, it is time consuming. So I thank you for your views, I thank you for your comments, and until the next one, take it easy.